So let's get started with some really basic trumpet exercises which are kind of worth their weight in gold and that is lip bends. There are a lot of different ways to do lip bends and I found benefit from many of them. But the ones I'm gonna share with you today really are about inviting us into experiencing for ourselves what we mean by strength and freedom. Remember, the real trumpet guru, as always, is a more resonant sound and easier response. Every time we practice anything, we wanna have those two things guiding us in, in our efforts. I'm going to show you some of the, the very specific exercises that I use to release the center of the embouchure into a free sound and at the same time strengthening the whole network of muscles uh, that, that, that we need to have stronger for things to work. There are two basic types of lip bends. Natural lip bend, where I'm actually bending the pitch down. Or I can play the lower note and then false finger a half step above. But keep the pitch the same. So those are the two basic kinds of lip bends that I use in my practice and in my teaching. So with each of these bends, both the natural bends and the false finger bends, I feel like there's two ways to do them and both are really beneficial. We can either really take our time, if you were thinking loosely about playing at a half note speed with our bends, I could do the same thing, the same idea, but use the false finger lip bends. There is another option, and that other option is to move pretty quickly between the notes. This can also be a wonderful invitation into freeing up the middle of the embouchure as you play. If I were doing natural lip bends, I might do them something like this. it works just as effectively to use false fingers that way. What I'm trying to do is play a game with myself where I'm keeping the pitch exactly the same even though I'm fingering up a half step, right? And, um, and it, require, it will just invite you into placing the energy of the note very far forward into um, figuring out how to keep a very similar set outside the mouthpiece and how to free things up inside the mouthpiece. When we do the actual bend, we want it to have a really nasal sound quality. And, and I practice bends at all dynamics, and every dynamic teaches me something new about this free freedom in the middle and strength outside. Um, so I might practice them, for example, much softer. That one was a particularly helpful one. I don't know if you could tell the difference in the sound, but the sound got quite a bit more resonant and alive after the bend. Practicing the bends at different dynamics is really helpful, but 
when I do it, I want the bend to have that nasal sound quality, almost like a real note, but maybe a little bit more obnoxious. I'm also being really conscientious of those potential common pitfalls on bends. It's really common to see students opening their teeth to accomplish the bend. So if you're opening your teeth, be it on the natural bend, If you're opening your teeth to get the bend to work, um, that's not really accomplishing what we're trying to understand. In that case, the teeth are kind of driving the sound of the bend, and we really want to figure out, again, how to transfer any excess tension in the middle out to the outer network of muscles as they attach to the skeleton. The other super common pitfall is for people uh, to, to just relax everything when they do the bend. So, and that might sound something like this. So where you're actually relaxing everything outside of the mouthpiece in order to accomplish the bend. What we're looking for is developing strength outside and freedom inside. As you do the bends, you want to be very conscientious about keeping the jaw as close together as gets you your best sound, and very conscientious about making sure that you actually are firming up to accomplish the bend. You are literally firming up to go down uh, on the bend. So those two things are really important. I found in my practice and with my students, if I do the same exercises every single day, I tend to actually get stiffer and get less free on the trumpet. So it feels really important to me to touch on the same principles every day, in this case, letting go of the airstream and finding that balance of strength and freedom. That's the principle that I'm working on, and the thing that's guiding me into this, as always, is my sound and the ease of playing. Here's an example of an exercise that uh, combines bends with moving long tones uh, that's really simple and has been really beneficial to me. Of course, I could absolutely reverse it and do something like. So that would be essentially the same exercise, but using the natural lip bend rather than the false fingering. And what I'm practicing is making sure that I'm firming up outside the mouthpiece when I do the bend. Uh, I'm, try I'm practicing trusting an even stream of air, doing my best not to huff and puff. I call it the big bad wolf in my studio. It's like, don't let the big bad wolf in the room. No huffing and puffing. We just want to leave that stream of air on. So those are the kinds of things that I'm practicing when I do that exercise. And the basic setup is, right, that I'm starting around middle G and I'm repeating this exercise as I go down in half steps. Another really common thing in lots of different systems is to, to increase the number of half steps that we're actually bending. The gist here is exactly the same, that even though I'm going to be bending more than one half step, I'm still going to be doing everything I can to stay up to go down, as Stamp would say, which is to say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the setup outside the mouthpiece strong, like it's on the top note, and I'm gonna be firming up as I go down. 
uh, and bringing the aperture together more and more, making sure that I'm not accomplishing the bend by opening to the inner membrane, but rather that I'm learning how to bring the aperture together as much as possible and to free it up as I do these bends. What I'm gonna do now is demonstrate uh, whole step lip bends, so two half steps, um, and I'll show you it with a natural bends and with uh, false fingerings. Either way, whether I'm doing the natural bends or the false fingerings, it's basically developing the same thing. And some days, uh, one helps me more than the other. So I'm constantly checking in with myself to see which ones help me get to that more resonant, easier sound more quickly. And of course, I could do that with three half steps as well. Again, I'm practicing doing my best not to open my teeth, doing my best to keep things together, doing my best to firm up to make the bends happen, and doing my best to keep the aperture on the outer tissue and, and coming very much as together as possible to accomplish these bends. If I were using either of those in a, in a practice session, I would simply take them down in descending half steps, for example. can hear for the third half step the last two times my chops were not really ready for it so it kind of spliotted down a partial and then I was able to get it back and in both cases it was because things were too open this golden register of middle G down to low C we can do lots of those um, different methods will advocate doing these bends down to the very bottom of your horn and extending into the pedal register I found benefit from experimenting with all of those approaches um, that were focusing on strength and freedom. We're focusing on keeping the aperture very together and in fact bringing it closer together. The more bends we do, meaning the more steps into a bend we go, the closer together we want to train the aperture to be so that we get this, this dichotomy between really close together but really free and easy.